Hey, this is Odd Jobs 2, and I just installed a LiftMaster DKL or DLK 400UI gate opener. It's also known elsewhere as a Viper or an Aleco. Uh, they're all very similar. Uh, I think some of them have some newer circuit boards, but they're all basically the same. Uh, made in China and various names slapped on them. Um, slight differences, but they all kind of function the same. This particular one is a chain drive and I just completed it and there's also one that has uh, an elongated um, tooth bar that you actually mount to the gate itself and it runs through a bigger sprocket on the side of the opener uh, but they're all very similar in operation so there's a lot of overlap there's a couple other videos out there um, Unfortunately, they just kind of show the opening and closing, and so I thought I would do one that would additionally help you as far as installation. The uh, manual uh, or installation guide, whatever you want to call it, um, has some good information in there. I think there's some things that should have been better explained. But that's typical when you're buying a product that's initially made in China. Before this, I, I was replacing a overhead door opener. A replacement was $1,500. Obviously, I was not going to spend that much on a replacement. So uh, I tried this one, and I'm into it for, I don't know, three-something. And it seems to be a good contender. Uh, I'll tell you what I like about it. I'll tell you what I don't like about it. Um... I guess what I don't like about it is it's smaller than the existing footprint of the replacement or the opener I was replacing. So if you look down, this is the original uh, mounting hardware for the prior one. So I had to hammer drill uh, and put uh, new bolts in the concrete for this one. Not the end of the world for anyone who's doing a brand new install. Uh, other than that, it was just kind of getting used to the new operation. Uh, this one is actually more user-friendly than the one I had before. So, without further ado, let me tell you some things that I did to make, I think, my installation easier, and they will probably help you. Uh, first and foremost, you have to measure, obviously, the height from the ground up. Make sure that's right. And it's very critical, the width between the opener and the actual gate assembly you have to make sure that's all correct so your chain travels in the exact right spot. Then in turn, of course, then you put your chain through your brackets and mount it accordingly. Now, one of the things I noticed on a lot of the other openers is they have a lot of slack in their chain. There are adjustment points at either side. I have some slack, but my chain does not overly droop. I did not want my chain to overly droop because as it goes into this, uh, where the gear set is, is I didn't want to catch the bottom of the gear set uh, or housing. I've seen replacement housings on the internet which leads me to believe that there's probably people out there running a really loose chain and then it binds up going into that housing and then in turn uh, busts the outer aluminum housing. So I have a little bit of tension on mine but not a ton. Now, the way you don't have too much tension is when I was putting in the chain, what I did is I basically had a bunch of two by fours and blocks and I shimmed these up. So basically the chain before it was connected on both sides was re resting on these elongated two by fours the whole way. Therefore, you didn't have, you weren't trying to pull the weight of the chain all the way across when you're connecting at this bracket. You want it, I measured it at the basically the same height of there and carried that height all the way there. So it was resting on two by fours all the way across. So then I could connect it there and tighten it, tighten it accordingly. Uh, the other thing I did that you'll notice is uh, I have the magnetic sensors, but what I did differently is I fabricated my own uh, steel brackets and I got some threaded collars and put the put the magnet mount on threaded collars. That way I could adjust the the width of uh, the magnetic sensor between the box and that. 
much better than the bracket based on the way my gate was constructed. Uh, my bracket was limiting that. Now, when you're adjusting things, you're going to have to take the tension off the gear set so you can move the gear and the gate controller back and forth. What you're going to do is you're going to put this in here and you're going to turn it counterclockwise. Now, these are cheap in plastic. They tend to break. I've broken both of those. I just put this in a pair of vice grips and then spin it around counterclockwise. That takes, that loosens the clutch assembly so then even though you have your gear set going through here, you can still freely push it back and forth and make your adjustments. So, if you do that with your power on, once you've powered it up, then in turn, you can push it freely and you can see how your magnetic sensors uh, interact with the magnetic switch. Now a couple things I did is the height is critical and they'll give you the height and say you know here's the you need to put the sensor between here and X. So what I did is I put a piece of duct tape across here and wherever the sensor is supposed to be I went ahead and of course as you can see made the mark on the duct tape. That made it easier so that way I could figure out, okay, my sensor needs to be, you know, the middle point right through the, the line on the duct tape. Uh, took a lot of the guesswork out of it. Now, the big question I had too is, is okay, where is my sensor going to rest in regards to the magnetic switch? So we'll pull this off real quick. And as you can see, the sensor actually rides pretty darn high in regards to the magnetic switch. That's the same for the other side. Uh, I also screwed up and thought the cl that I reversed the sensor. The top sensor on my gate is for closed and the bottom sensor is for open. I, had, I spent two weeks swapping out the two and it wouldn't work obviously. So make sure you know which sensor is for which. Sensors for which. Now the same goes of course for the o open sensor. It barely covers the bottom of this magnetic uh, switch here. And you want to leave the middle open, which I saw on another video, because you don't want to uh, basically, if you go down the middle, it interacts with both sensors and confuses the operator. The other thing that happened when I first put in my door is it went open all the way. And what I found out is that you have to adjust the rate of which your door or your gate travels. So that's what this adjustment is right here. Now you'll see that on the uh, uh, instructions and it will, you'll have to kind of adjust it accordingly so it, it travels the correct amount. Uh, also, the gate is load sensitive. I had a bunch of leaves in the track when I uh, first was operating this because uh, this door hasn't worked in about three years, so uh, uh, yeah, so that's that's that. So uh, that's the other reason you have to adjust that sensor. So that's the long and short of it. Uh, connecting your power lines, uh, you have to unfortunately use a pretty thin gauge wire to uh, connect into the you know your power source. There, I went ahead and, and put some you know some spacers in between these because they're pretty close that way they don't contact each other so this is um, actually a bulk extension cord I bought at Ace Hardware uh, so that's that uh, the door works great now also got these handy dandy little controllers and you can easily program more too so um, uh, that's, I think, what you need to know in a nutshell, above and beyond you actually following the directions. Also, the other big question I had is, where does the sensor come to a halt? As you can see, the sensor, when closing, comes to about the halfway point of the base sensor. So, in regards to thinking where you need to put your, your sensor in the closed position, you know, don't, I would not expect it to be completely aligned and, and right in the middle of this. So, uh, consider that when you're mounting your bracket where you uh, need to adjust it. So, uh, hopefully this helps you. 
Uh, if I would have seen this video, it probably would have saved me about three weeks worth of additional hard work. And uh, I guess that's that. Now it works perfectly. And I'm uh, going to put this cover on, take off the duct tape, and then uh, put the, the access plug back on for that. So uh, it's good to go. Uh, thanks for watching.